philosophic hierarchy has taken on this role in modern times. The Reformation effectively emasculated the political power of the church. It laid the foundation for the Puritan movement, whose members fled religious persecution in Europe to found a new nation in the Americas based on spiritual principles drawn from Rosicrucian sources, and all of our founding fathers were members of these secret societies. And many people have also chastised me for making that claim, but it is easily proved easily. The problem with most of you people is you believe blindly what you're told and you never check anything. Many of you still believe that George Washington chopped down a cherry tree and when his father asked him who did it, he told the truth. Well, that's all a lie, folks. There was no cherry tree. He never chopped one down. His father never asked him if he did. And I really don't know if he would have told the truth or not. Most politicians don't. Most politicians do not. It also provided an atmosphere of open-mindedness which allowed the seeds of the Renaissance to flower based on the best ideas of the pagan classical world. Although the Habsburgs were to rule for another 300 years until 1806, the Reformation destroyed any hope of a united Europe controlled by the Roman Catholic Church until today. Above everything else, the religious reforms of the 16th century marked the beginning of the period when the Church became determined to exterminate the secret societies which had weakened its power base. I'm not aware that the Vatican has changed its policy one iota from this. In fact, its determination has doubled over the past 150 years, even though today the secret societies flourish in America, and with only a wink from the American Catholic Church bishops. In fact, the Jesuit Society was formed to combat this from another secret order of Illuminati, or the Illumbrados, in Spain. The head of this group was Ignatius Loyola, who was in fact arrested by the Inquisition. He used his influence with powerful people to gain an audience with the Pope. He went in on his knees and walked out on his two legs with a papal bull, granting him immunity from prosecution from the Inquisition, from any king, queen, country, or law, save one, the Pope. And he was to found a new order, the Society of Jesus, now known as the Jesuits. See the Oath of a Secret Society, which makes up a chapter in my book. And you will see that they are sworn to destroy the Protestant movement and Protestants wherever they can find them. Above everything else, the religious reforms of the 16th century marked the beginning of the period when the church became determined to exterminate the secret societies which had weakened its power base. The secret societies, though they claim to follow the precepts of Jesus Christ, actually provide an alternative version of spirituality to their followers. They deny the divinity of Jesus Christ, they deny that he was the Son of God, or was in actuality the incarnated God upon this earth. That he died, or that has, he was resurrected, or that he sits upon the right hand of the throne of God. Instead, he has become an ascended master, a teacher. And Christ has become an office which anyone can attain. You too can become a Christ in the New World Order. They actually provide this alternative version of spirituality, and it is the foundation of what you know today as the New Age Movement. They allege that the Church had deliberately subverted the teachings of Jesus and teach that there are other sources of spiritual knowledge which are as valid as Christian belief and predated it by thousands of years. In 1738, the first papal bull to combat Freemasonry was issued by Pope Clement XII. This bull threatened any Catholic who became a Mason with excommunication, at that time an extremely, extremely serious punishment. In fact, nothing worse could be imagined. 
In the 1870s, claims that secret societies such as the Illuminati were using Freemasonry as a cover for radicalism and revolution gave the church fresh charges to level against the Masonic lodges. The climax of the church's crusade to destroy the influence of Freemasonry came in the 19th century. In 1864, Pope Pius X condemned socialism and the secret societies in his Syllabus of Errors, which he published following an investigation of revolutionary activities in Italy. Every investigation has found that socialism emanates from the secret societies. Twelve months after the publication of the syllabus, the Pope again condemned the secret societies, specifically attacking Freemasonry as anti-Christian, satanic, and pagan in origin. In 1884, Pope Leo XIII issued a proclamation identifying Masonry as one of the secret societies working to establish Satan's kingdom on earth. He also claimed that Masonry was attempting to revive the manners and customs of the pagans. They have succeeded in a visit to the Luxor Hotel in Las Vegas. We'll convince you of that. It has often been claimed that the ultimate objective of the secret societies was to infiltrate the Vatican and place their own man on the throne. See my book for the outcome. Some modern critics of the Roman Catholic Church, especially those with ultra-traditionalist views, have seen in the liberalization of the Church in recent years proof that its hierarchy has been penetrated at the highest levels by agents of the secret societies who are working for its eventual downfall. At the celebrations in honor of St. Francis of Assisi in 1986, which stressed the unity of all religions, the Pope participated in a multi-religious prayer for world peace. Traditionalists were horrified to see the pontiff happily share a platform with a Tibetan Lama, a Hindu Swami, a Native American medicine man, a Jewish rabbi, and a Maori high priest. It was noted that the unity of all the world's religions and the recognition that they all derive from the same ancient source is the central philosophy of the secret societies. It is the goal of the World Council of Religions. It was the message of Pope John Paul II in Denver, Colorado. Dear listeners, and he replaced the last Pope, who tried, who tried to be a good Pope, he was murdered after exactly 33 days in office. Now, I read this from La Traviata. La Traviata, the December 1993 issue, I believe. Is it the December? Yes, December 1993 issue. To show you that I'm not the only insane person out here who has discovered the truth amongst all the lies. Anyone can do it. I don't know who wrote that. I never saw that paper before. It was sent to me by a Kaji member. The author's name, I don't believe, is listed there. And even if it was, I still don't know him. Anyone who wants to look for the truth and find it will find it. It's not hidden, ladies and gentlemen. In fact, today, even though it began as a conspiracy hundreds and thousands of years ago, today it is all being done in the open. They believe that all of us are so stupid, actually, that they even write books about it, disclosing their whole intentions, all of their plans. Knowing that none of you will ever read those books, and if you did, you wouldn't believe it. And I said, none of you. That's not really true. There's some of you out there who are learning, who are awake, who are struggling, who are fighting this battle with me and with Carolyn and with many others to try to save the penultimate achievement of all of mankind throughout the history of the world. And that's the Constitution and the Bill of Rights of the United States of America. 